There's also a thing called a uh, highway trust fund where money uh, goes into that from the gasoline and fuel taxes. That essentially pays for federal monies that go to road construction. And I'm sure there's some more of them. But it is an outlandish lie that 40% of the federal dollars yep. spent are yeah, it's, borrowed. It's demagoguery. No money is yep. borrowed going into Social Security. It's paid in there. Well, it's, well it's, that's it's, a lie, too. Sort of the, the accounting for Social Security is sort of interesting. The, they write themselves a check, essentially, that says they have this much money in the bank. But they they could definitely continue to pay those things. I mean, when they balance, what, what they're essentially saying is, if we balance the budget, the first thing we're going to cut is all Social Security benefits. Yeah. That's they're saying this is the only way to balance the budget, and it's that's demagoguery, right? That's look like at the, look at the, the salaries of the president and and the members of Congress. Look at all well, how the, much the all biggest, the senators make. The biggest expenditure that the U.S. government has is on war. They spend more than a trillion dollars a year on war. If you cut, if you if you brought the troops home and stopped sending them to die in foreign lands, killing people who can't afford rice, the, bu- <laughs> the budget would be balanced immediately, right? With no cuts to anything. Every troop in Afghanistan Afghanistan costs one million dollars a year, right? So you could pay, you could bring them home and pay every GI half a million dollars a year and cut the military budget almost in half. Right, but that's never that's never discussed. I mean, you could cut 500 billion dollars out of the budget immediately by bringing troops home and paying them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. But aren't they keeping us safe over there, Dave? Yeah, from people who can't afford rice and live in live in caves. But isn't that why? I mean, isn't that? Yeah, they'll the throw gen- rice grains on one side of the <laughs> ocean and they might drift across and swell up on our shores. It's right. so stupid that we fall for it. I mean, every time something like this comes up, it's scare the people, scare the people, scare the people, and they go back and forth. They put an artificial date on there. Oh, we almost had something. No, we didn't get it. Oh, well, we have to compromise, compromise, compromise until it gets right up to the very edge where the people are going, just do anything. We don't care. Save us from ourselves. So then they pass exactly what they wanted in the very first place. They raise the debt ceiling and they don't cut anything. Or they they raise taxes along with it, and which is one of the things that that keeps coming up. It's like, wait a second. Wait, I don't pay my fair share. You don't pay your fair share? Well, if they can't bu- balance the budget, clearly you're not paying your fair share, Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, on the t- you're on the hook for at least another trillion a year. I like Murkowski is governing the people. Isn't her job, I believe it's one of the descriptions in the Constitution, is they're supposed to have a budget? Isn't it Congress's duty to have a when, budget? When was the last time we actually had a budget? It's been a couple of years. I mean, we've been working on nothing but emergency resolutions for years now. Years. And I love everyone's blaming Obama. They're saying, well, where's Obama's plan? I haven't seen the president's plan. Not no, we're his job. Not his job. Not his job. Thanks for the call, Jim. 458-TALK is the number. See if we can squeeze in at least one more here before the bottom of the hour. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, this is Chris. Chris, what's on your mind? Oh, well, you know, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a veteran of uh, Iraq. Did two deployments over there. And, and uh, I can assure you that having your hands tied in a, in a combat zone and not actually being able to do your job is uh, is, is less than pleasing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it boiling down to the money thing, though, is, uh, you know, may, maybe, the, maybe the state of Alaska should just take all the oil royalty money that they got sitting in these pots, purchase gold, refuse to use the U.S. dollar as currency here in the state, and, and use use coinage. Look, yeah, at, that, look at how no, much that is, and, that is a good idea. If, if all yep. 50 states would just do this, if, if just a common man, not, I mean, just, just an average, everyday Joe who works for a living said, you know what? I'm not going to use the U.S. dollar anymore. Here, just give it to the government. Say, say here, you can you can have all my all my paper worthless money. You can burn it. You can give it to the Chinese. You can do whatever you want because I'm not going to use it anymore. So go go ahead, pay off all our debts with it, yeah, yeah, um, and, and then just and then just flat out and say, now what are you going to do, government? Because they can't do anything at that point. They can't. What they got? They've lost their. They've lost their. They've lost the people who actually do anything. That's right. And, and the, the and states they, actually they never gave up. Anymore. The states actually never gave up their right to make um, constitutional coinage, like you said. The states all have the right to uh, mint gold or silver coinage, and 
and make it, uh, you know, official money in their state. They all still have that. None of them are doing it, but they could they could all do that tomorrow if they wanted to. I think Alaska had 20, when I moved to Alaska 13 years ago, I believe they had $25 billion, something like that, in the, yeah. in the bank, supposedly. Can you imagine if they bought gold then? Because I believe it was about 280 an ounce. Yeah. And look at where our money would be now. Exactly. If we had just the gold we bought then, it's gone up 800%. And that, but that's against the value of the dollar. If you look at the real value, the gold still has approximately the same real value yeah, that, it, that it had back then. And yeah. if you look at right now, and, and that's an excellent, that was a superb call. Thank you very much. And by the way, thank yeah, you for your service uh, in, in for for our nations uh, in the in, in the armed services. We do appreciate that here. Uh, oh well, thank you, I, and I appreciate uh, your service also. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, here, here's one, one thing. Again. Thank you very much. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, right now, if we would just stop sending the gold that we mine in Alaska out of the state, and turn around and use the mint that we have here in Alaska to create coins, and we could make small coins. They don't have to be the big one ounce things. We could make little tiny coins out of Alaskan gold. How many people would use it? Would you use it, Josh? If it was, oh, yeah. I mean, if it was legal currency, Absolutely. if you could, if you could pay people in gold and receive gold back in payment, would you use it as currency? Absolutely. Dave, would yeah, you the, use it as currency? Uh, maybe, maybe I already do. Maybe I don't. <laughs> uh, the, the hurdle, the hurdle for that for business, if you want to operate on the up and up, of course, is the IRS um, mandates that you keep track of all your accounting denominated in paper money, right, fiat dollars, and so that's. It, it makes it a pain to do all the accounting in gold, but of course the state could uh, the state could nullify that if they wanted to. Now, didn't didn't the we state... pass a constitutional amendment that authorized the IRS? Well, uh, who's we? I, I, I never did. I never signed the constitution either. It's not a valid uh-huh. contract that binds me. None of us have ever signed it. Definitely didn't sign the. Was it Sixteenth Amendment? Yeah, it was Sixteenth Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Just nullify it. The state could do it. The, the state the state could say that business transacted in its you know currency is not subject to federal taxation because you're not using federal money, right? Or they Oof. could just say any any transaction that happens in the state is not regulated under the Commerce Clause because it's not going outside of yeah. the state. At right. the very least, I mean, if you want to get all technical with what the feds would say, you say, well, this is all transaction and transactions there's, in the state. You have no authority over it. It's there's an gold. there's an article out there. There's an interview with uh, this guy Edwin Vieira, who's a constitutional money scholar, and he actually talks exactly about what the last caller mentioned. Um, it was an interview, uh, Edwin Vieira and, and David Galland, I think, of Casey Research. It'd be worth, uh, if, you're, if your listeners are interested, it'd be worth Googling that. And he talks about the two things that, that states must do if they want to avoid going down with the federal ship. And number one was reinstituting uh, gold and silver constitutional money within their states, as they're totally authorized to do and have been forever. Um, and the other was uh, taking back control of their of their national guard. Yep. Now, okay. Now uh, you're doing two things right now, Dave, that are very very dangerous. First and foremost, you're encouraging people to read. <laughs> okay. And secondly, you're encouraging people to make up their own minds and think for themselves. Why don't you just tell them what they should think? I mean, that's what uh, everybody else does on the radio, right? Yeah. Well, that's. I might be. I there's a strong possibility that everything I say is wrong. So uh, everybody should definitely go out and read and think for themselves. Think about uh, we the constant complaint here in Fairbanks is the high cost of energy. How uh, I mean that would solve the energy problem right there. The cost of energy is gone. If you're yeah, the cost of gold. the cost of uh, well, a, a gallon of gasoline was 25 cents in 1964 when we still had uh, silver money, right? And so that was a quarter. It cost you a quarter to buy a gallon of gas. So a silver quarter today is a little bit under a quarter ounce of silver. And uh, silver's at about 40 bucks an ounce. So a gallon of gas today has actually gotten cheaper in silver. It would be about uh, 30, it would be about uh, $8 a gallon in 1964 prices. So energy prices have actually declined because technology has progressed and refining techniques and all this. But our money has lost value so much faster that the nominal prices have gone up. And, and instead of clamoring to fix the money problem, they're clamoring to give us cheaper energy, which basically is, and, and everything else, every solution that I've heard, or even possible theory of a solution, has to do with basically more government interference. It can't be cheaper if the the denominator that you're using to purchase that energy keeps losing its value. It keeps going up. Your money loses value, then everything you have to purchase with that costs more of that 
denominator. Yeah. I have a dollar. Well, you go buy a candy bar. A few years ago, you could buy four candy bars for a dollar. Now it takes a dollar fifty to buy it. It's not because that candy bar costs more money, because your dollar's worth less. You take, I mean, all we'd have to do is, if we did this with the gold and silver, we call up the oil company, and, hey, I need to fill up my heating fuel tank, so it comes fills it up. How much owe you? Ah, silver dollar, right on. Yeah, there's actually already credit cards that will uh, move silver and gold grams too. They're available to a lot of people living outside the U.S., but none of the banks who do them want to interact with U.S. clients because of IRS laws. Oh, you guys are going to make my head explode. 458-TALK is the number. We're coming up here on the Fox News. If you are listening and you got something to say, what's stopping you from calling in? 458-TALK, the number. Those of you on hold, we will get to you in just a minute. And, of course, as always, you can join us in the chat room as well, kfar660.com. This is Local Talk Radio. The show is called Patriots Lament right here on KFAR 660 on your AM dial. Fairbanks is listening to Fox News on Local Talk Radio. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. House Republicans currently debating expected to slap down Senator Harry Reid's proposal to solve the debt ceiling crisis. They'll be voting shortly on the House version of a measure by the Senate Majority Leader. Reid's bill is up for a test vote early tomorrow morning in the Senate. The sticking points are the triggers. In English, that means enforcement mechanisms because a lot of people don't have faith in Congress. And so if you raise the debt ceiling, what forces them to make truly substantial cuts down the road? Fox's Mike Emanuel in Washington. The Democrats are saying let's put tax hikes as a potential trigger to force the Republicans to the table. Republicans are saying let's put spending cuts to force Democrats to the table. And authorities calling it a miracle that all 163 survived the crash of a Caribbean Airlines jet in Guyana. The flight from New York touching down on a wet runway, then breaking apart just short of a 200-foot ravine. Fox News, we report, you decide. Hear the news unfold. News Talk 660 KFAR. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, local talk radio. Uh, you know, you look at what has happened in Mexico and the, the failed government that is happening there. Uh, basically, you have uh, a, a, well, a corrupt system with a federal government that is basically out of control. Uh, the elected officials are, um, I mean, basically you don't have justice. You have who can afford the biggest bribe. Uh, you don't have protection for business. It's you have to buy your own, uh, even if you. I mean, just think about it. Can you imagine living in a system in, in a system where you can't trust the police, and where only <laughs> and where only the criminals are the ones who are allowed to have who are are the ones who have guns because they don't care about the law? Sounds like California. <laughs> it's well. Where okay. did you say that was? It's Mexico. Oh. Well, yeah. The upside in Mexico though is there's. Um, the government's much smaller, so its power to enforce all that stuff is, is actually diminished. The downside there is that the mafias have taken over because the U.S. war on drugs has um, has given them all the money. Yeah, and the uh, ATF has armed them. Yeah. You know, that's another situation entirely. Uh, I mean, Holly, just the idea that we've got our own government taking guns and giving them, giving them, to drug dealers to try to force, I mean, basically they're trying to force a situation where they can come in and limit more Americans' rights when it comes to guns and firearms. I haven't heard a whole lot about that, kind of keeping that on the low down. Maybe that's why we're having a debt crisis, to hide that story. <laughs> Among others. Yeah. 